All right, let's start from the start. In July 2020, I moved into a new build home with a 5.2 by 5.3 meter double garage, which looked something like this. Well, actually, exactly like this. This, this is it. Two single skin brick walls, a breeze block wall featuring fuse box and boiler, a manually operated up and over door, a very dusty floor and a single pathetic light bulb. So I got to work. I cleaned the floor, I put down some garage floor paint, three coats to be exact. I painted the walls, I cut and installed some rubber horse stall mats and it looked like this. Eventually I painted that wall too. I added some car door protector designed to stop you scratching your door on the wall if you park your car in a narrow garage as a kind of protective skirting. I installed a single 6x4 foot mirror and I had that tragic light bulb replaced with some 60x60cm 60 LED panels. Then it was time for equipment. I went for a half rack, some dumbbells ranging from 5 to 50 kilograms in 5 kilogram increments, a dual pulley cable system a very ugly treadmill that I basically wrapped to make less ugly, a maze bag, and I also built a deadlift platform with some plywood and some rubber mat offcuts left over from the flooring. After a couple of extra tweaks, just some hooks for storage and some speakers, etc., it was looking like this. And that's as far as we got in that original home gym build video. I haven't updated you at all since, but you can go back and watch that whole video if you want a more in-depth explanation of how I did everything. Now, let's get you up to present day. So going into winter 2020, I quickly realized it's cold. And whilst I got some great insightful advice from the internet, such as why don't you try not being a little bitch? I eventually opted to insulate the roof. Now, there are a few options for this. You can plasterboard the joists at ceiling level and lay your rock wool or some similar fiberglass type insulation on top. Obviously, if you want a really good finish, you could then get that plastered and painted or just paint straight onto your plasterboard. You could use something like Kingspan between the rafters at roof level, but that's very, very silver, so you either have to board the ceiling still or find some way of covering it if you don't want to feel like you're inside Apollo 11 every time you train. Or you could do what I did, which is get spray foam insulation. Now, this is ugly, messy, probably slightly more expensive, but it does have its benefits, one of which is it's quick. Now, if you do do this, do it before everything else so that you don't have to cling film your entire gym like I did. Anyway, this was done in a few hours and it cost me about 800 pounds. As mentioned, it is particularly ugly, so I needed a solution. Boarding and painting seemed like a ball lake of epic proportions and really overkill because I didn't need a hard barrier, I just needed to hide that spray foam. Now you can paint onto the foam, but that would also be very awkward, messy, and probably still quite ugly. Instead, I bought some 1.5 by 2 meter thin black polyester sheets, and I used a staple gun to fix those to the joists. Now, when I'm filming YouTube videos, all you can see is black, and the ceiling blends nicely into the wall. It was cheap, easy, and it does the job perfectly. However, this whole roof insulation process made essentially no difference whatsoever to the temperature and i will come back to that later but let's move on for now the next thing i did was buy a leg extension it was an x demo leg extension from precore now i really hated the ergonomics of this machine i just felt like this pad did not sit in the right place so i almost never used it for leg extensions although very minor silver lining if you really are a glass half full kind of person it did turn out to be decent for hip thrusts to fit this in, I moved the dumbbells from that side of the gym to the other side in front of the mirror where they are now. I swapped my initial bench for a different one and eventually I got another leg extension, this time an extension curl combo. This was another mistake. Whilst the leg extension movement itself was fine, the stack was too light for my needs. I wasn't really able to do sets of less than like 15 and have them actually be difficult enough. And then as a seated leg curl, I really didn't enjoy the movement. And whilst machines with a dual function like this are good for saving space if you have a home gym, I am told by people who make gym equipment that they are pretty hard to engineer well enough to make them anywhere near as good as the individual single station machines would be. So there is a compromise. So now you're up to speed. That's how the home gym evolved over the past couple of years and now it's time for some upgrades. 
Okay, so I stand before you in an almost empty gym. So over the course of the last week or so, I've got rid of the dual pulley cables, the half rack, the leg extension from Precore that I hated, and the leg extension curl combo. That was where the camera is now. So I've kept the dumbbells, of course, no point in getting rid of those. Uh, the treadmill, I've got that for now. I may also swap that out at some point. I'm gonna keep one of these benches to get rid of the other. Kept the punch bag. So that's it, deadlift platform, of course, even though I don't really deadlift, but I might one day. So I think that makes me a hoarder. Anyway, today is delivery day. So we got a few pieces getting delivered. It's gonna look very similar to how it did before, but the uh, quality is gonna be just on another level. So let's see what happens. So we had a big delivery yesterday. I'll show you all in a big reveal at the end of the video. For now, the next task is insulating this door. So I mentioned earlier that I did the roof and it made fuck all difference, right? Now that is because you're losing heat through this thin sheet of metal with lots of air holes in it. There's also a bit of a draft underneath, which I think I might also have to figure out something for as well. But anyway, for now, what I'm gonna do is insulate the door so what I have here is some more like interior spaceship design. Super foil. I'm basically going to put this along here, cut sheets of this, do big panels. Uh, and then what I'm going to have is a really silver door, which is going to be pretty ugly. So I also have some more of the sheets that I used on sec sheets that I used uh, for the ceiling. So what I'm thinking is I'm just going to staple these to these, cut them to size, fill in the panels, and then we'll have to figure out something for around the windows as well, because obviously I want to keep those windows because I've got zero natty light except for that, and uh, yeah, obviously want to keep it. And if you can see, there's these wooden posts as well. I just want them to blend in, so I'm either going to paint those the same gray as this wall, or I'm gonna paint them the same black that I've used on, you can't see because I've paint, painted it black, but a bit of wood that goes around the top. That's it, next up the door. And hopefully, once this is all blacked out, it'll be another good backdrop to use for videos and stuff, and it won't look like I'm filming in a garage. I don't know how neat this is gonna be, but I wanna do my best, so let's do it. All right, so I went back and forth on a few different methods for this. It was kind of awkward, to be honest, but eventually I decided to make a kind of curtain slash drape thing to cover the bottom two thirds of the door. That way, it's just a pure black background that you won't see on camera. What I will say is I have noticed a big difference since doing this in how the gym keeps heat. I still have to get warm in the first place because there's no actual heating in the gym, but after a few sets, I can usually do the rest of my workout without a shirt, which is ultimately the goal. So it's certainly serving its purpose. Yo, 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 so we are finally complete. The world's, not the world's sickest home gym, but one of them. Definitely Manchester's sickest home gym is complete. So I'm gonna take you through everything new. I'll take you through everything actually, old and new, piece by piece. So you will notice as I'm going through that everything new is from Primal Strength. They very kindly sorted me the fuck out. I'll tell you about each individual piece as we get to it. So chapters will be along the bottom so that you can just scrub to whichever thing you give a shit about, or you can just be a sound lad and watch my whole video so that my viewer attention goes up, my channel goes up, I can keep making sicker home gyms. All right, this is the Primal Strength Commercial Monster Series leg extension. So I'll link everything in the video description as well in case you wanna look at it in more specific detail. So I am exceedingly happy to announce that after three leg extensions, I have uh, finally found one that is very sick indeed. So the quest for a leg extension is officially over. So this has got a 125 kilogram stack. It's got an adjustable foot pad and you can also adjust the starting position and range of motion as well. And most of all, it's just a very comfortable, smooth movement, obviously just a very well-designed machine. Also, I just think it looks sick. So very happy with that overall. All right, so this is obviously just the same treadmill as from the original video. Uh, to be honest, it's pretty good for the price that I paid for it, uh, but I still might replace it or update it with something else at some point. I'll come to that later. Okay, next up, this is the Primal Strength Commercial Dual Adjustable Pulley. So, first thing to mention, 
just look at it. It's an absolute beast of machine. Just love the way it looks. I love these big metal panels that cover the majority of like the stack and the mechanism stuff. I just think it looks generally sick. Obviously, I didn't fix the sticker on that's got all the demo exercises because if you do that in a home gym, you're officially the world's biggest fucking nerd. All right, so these are 100 kilogram stacks, so a lot heavier than my previous pulleys. But also the main thing for me, the main improvement on this that I notice is just how ridiculously smooth it is. So you'll notice on some pulleys that they're only fully smooth when you pull in when all the cams are aligned, but this is just ridiculously, just buttery smooth, irrespective of the angle that you're pulling from. And that, together with the weight of the stacks, does actually open up quite a lot of new potential exercises for me. You've also got the holes for each pin placement that are lasered into this metal here. So obviously, I just note that down in my exercise notes when I'm tracking my lifts and stuff, and it helps me for just setting stuff up quicker the next time, because I hate when you don't remember like which placement you have the pins in. Same for when you adjust pins on machines and stuff like that. So that is really helpful as well. Uh, obviously, I've just got all the typical attachments, the foam handles that are just more convenient and more comfortable for things like cable crossovers. I've got the metal handles that are probably better for your heavier pulling exercises because your wrist straps grip onto them better. I've got the standard ropes for tricep exercises, stuff like that. And also some cuffs if you want to use those for some raises. You can do pull-ups on here, however, my head gets dangerously close to the ceiling. I can do them, but not with the hat on. So. I do them on the, on the rack anyway. I've obviously still got the same dumbbells as before, as well as the punch bag and also the deadlift platform. I've also got this flat bench, which is the first bench that I ever bought in lockdown when I was still living in an apartment. I just use that more to sit on and put things on, but I keep it because it's good to have two in case me and my girlfriend are training at the same time. And it's also really light and easy to move around the gym. I've also got this belt for weighted dips and weighted pull-ups, as well as this weighted vest. To be honest, I use the belt for dips and pull-ups and the vest I sometimes used for weighted push-ups with the parallettes that I've got over there. They're not really part of my program, but I just think press-ups on those parallettes feel really good. Okay, so this is the Monster Series Adjustable Zero Gap Bench from Primal. So this is a similar bench to one that I've had previously, but I ended up swapping that out for reasons that I don't really want to go into because I'm, I'm still salty about it. So it can go flat, obviously it can go incline it can go decline and you can also adjust this seat back and forth so you get rid of the gap obviously to use it as a decline bench you do need to put the leg attachment on it otherwise you'll fall off again i just think it looks sick very solid bench super happy with it all right so for plates i've got a pair of each of these from 5 to 25 kilograms and these are the performance series plv olympic weight discs they're just more convenient than my old bumper plates because obviously they've got the handles so you can grip them uh, and also they're not ridiculously massive so when you're doing curls and stuff you don't look stupid doing like easy bar curls with a 5 kg bumper plate each side so there's that okay now the pièce de résistance this is the primal strength what's it called the Primal Strength Power Rack Combo Smith Machine. So, obviously functions as a normal rack with your J-hooks and spotter arms, so you can do your overhead press, squat, whatever you want to do. However, you've also got a fully functioning Smith Machine system as well. There's also a bar for doing your pull-ups, as well as a landmine attachment built in, so you can do your T-bar rows or whatever you want to do there. There's a little hook there, I guess that's for battle ropes, which I will never do in my life. I also have a dip attachment, which I use a lot as well. So obviously, I previously just had a half rack, which is fine. It's like your bread and butter if you're building a home gym. Once you've got free weights, half rack's like pretty much the next thing. However, for this tiny bit of extra depth of about 10 inches or something, I've got just infinite potential new exercises that I can do. So I think that's a pretty good trade-off, right? And really that brings me on to the whole reason for this refurb and the thing that I think anybody who's building a home gym should be thinking about, should be at the forefront of your considerations. So when you've got a home gym, what becomes quickly apparent is the things that you can't do. And they are the things that you end up actually making the journey to the gym for. So that's really what I wanted to cover with this whole gym refurb. So I'm gonna just quickly go through 
the main things for me. First, we have leg extensions. So yes, you can do squats, lunges, and whatever compound free weight exercises you wanna do for your quads. However, A, they don't target your quads in the same way as leg extensions do. And B, you don't want to have to do this big taxing, fatiguing compound exercise every time you wanna hit your quads. Now, given that there just isn't a good quad isolation exercise with free weights, I would say this is probably the only or one of the only instances I can think of when it's worth taking up that level of floor space just for a station that you can do a single movement on, but that is worth it for me. Second, calves. So you can do free weight calf exercises, but I've just never felt like I've got as good of a workout doing like dumbbell or barbell calf raises than what I've been doing them on a Smith machine. I think the extra stabilization you need with free weights kind of takes away a bit from being able to concentrate on the contraction. So believe it or not, this might sound a little bit strange, but this is probably the primary reason I got this Smith machine. I also got a ramp so that I can do them with a better range of motion. And I can also use this to do a seated calf raise as well. So I'm covering all of my bases in terms of calf exercises. This for me is honestly quite a revolution. Third, abs. So I was previously pretty much just doing kneeling cable crunches and also some hanging leg raises which i'm not really very fond of but now that i've got the bench that goes decline along with that leg attachment i can do my two staple ab exercises which are a decline crunch or a decline weighted crunch if you want to hold some weight and also a reverse crunch again these might seem like small things but to me they do make a big difference of course i've also got a load of other options for exercises now that i didn't have before i could do some narrow stance hack squats on the smith machine i can do some seated smith machine overhead press which i do really enjoy uh, because of this smoothness and the weight of those cables now i've got a lot more options for pull exercises uh, one thing that I have been enjoying a lot recently that I could do on the previous cables but it just didn't feel quite as good is some lying lateral raises. Probably my favourite exercise at the moment. One, two, one, two, levels check, sort me levels out. Alright people, so I'm just finishing up editing this video. Wanted to check in real quick, just say a few things before I leave. First of all, thanks again to Primal for sorting me out with all that gym equipment. I genuinely can't stress enough like how impressed I am with it. It did exceed my expectations on every level. Um, if you are decking out your own home gym, PT studio, even commercial gym, obviously check them out. Don't take my word for it. I could be a paid actor, you know, check the trust pilot reviews, which I have checked, they are sick. Um, I first heard of Primal because they were recommended in a home gym community Facebook page. That is also a very good Facebook page if you are trying to get like, you know, advice on building your own home gym. Second of all, obviously that wouldn't have happened in the first place if you all didn't watch my videos, so I have to also extend a thanks to you. I am blessed beyond a belief. Uh, I'm going to move on from saying thanks because this sounds like a fucking Oscar speech. Uh, if you have any questions about building, building your home gym, setting it up, what equipment to get, stick them in the comments because that's the kind of shit I actually do enjoy talking about. You know, at this stage in my YouTube career, <laughs> don't get me wrong, as much as I appreciate it, like... Uh, you know, I think I've answered like how to get abs so many fucking times. I'm kind of bored of it. But if you ask me how best to use a six by six foot floor space, then I'm going to chew your fucking ear off. So, yeah, any questions you've got, stick them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. Um, last thing to say is obviously it's never done. Y your home gym, if you've got one yourself, you'll know that it's always just a work in progress. Uh, if you've got any suggestions and stuff, I've got a little bit of extra space I could use. Um, yeah, so watch your space, obviously. It's always just the, uh, it's always the start. See you later. Jordan Lenny is my hero.